Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. We're gonna jump right into it because baby ain't got something she wanna say, okay? And let me just say this because what I'm about to talk about is it ain't really got nothing to do with being poly, whether you are or not. It's really about just having common sense and understanding the way life works. But the thing is, what I understand is everybody was not fortunate to grow up with males in their life. I run into so many women who've only gotten the side from a woman, meaning the woman's perspective and how women think about stuff and all of this kind of stuff like that. I was fortunate enough to have my grandfathers and my uncles, um, godfathers. Like I was fortunate enough to have real men in my life and not just be in my life and be around, but really pour into me and pour wisdom into me. Okay. You are single until you are married. Let me say it again. You are single until you are married. Nobody cares about relationships. When you talk to the IRS, they don't care about your relationship. When you doing insurance, they don't care about your relationship. Nothing in life that is important matters other than single or married. It ain't no in between in them. Okay. So I posted up a video and the video basically expressed kind of how I feel. Um, the lady was basically saying that all men are eligible candidates to date if they are not married. Meaning, if I if you pursue me and you know you're in a relationship, now this was what her her philosophy. If you pursue me and you knew you was in a relationship, you knew you was in a relationship when you decided to pursue me. So that means that now you got two girlfriends because you got the one that you had and you got me. All right. Ain't he feel a little bit different about it? My thing is, if you if you're not married and you single and you pursue me and you got an old lady, then me, you, and your old lady gonna sit at the table and we gonna talk about it. Because before I sit in your face, she gonna give me her blessing for me to do it. That's how I feel about it. That, that that's the way I operate, right? Because I don't do no blue leg poly. But a lot of times, what I found, and this don't matter if you poly or not, I see women who literally are in relationships and operating as if they are married in a relationship and they're taking this relationship so serious to heart, but the person that they with ain't taking a relationship serious the way they taking it. And then when the shit hit the fan, you getting upset with everybody, but the person who wasn't taking y'all relationship serious. If you in a relationship and y'all committed and y'all monogamous, you ain't even got no business being out there in the dating market. So if your man out there in the dating market, then that means that Obviously, you and him ain't on the same page about the relationship. You can't be all in, invested, and in all of this kind of stuff, and he don't know it. So, look like to me, if a, a certain type of conversation need to be had, as if me and you, we exclusively dating, and now it means that you're not going out there dating other people. That conversation have to be had. See, a lot of y'all don't know how to date. Y'all meet people. Y'all put yourself in a relationship with them. You literally, in your mind, put yourself in a relationship with them. And then you talk about all this time the child and been together in years and all this shit. And then you the only person that's riding up the relationship escalator. And this man down here is still on the floor level. You all the way up there on the relationship escalator. And he all the way down here on the floor. He ain't get on the escalator with you. You promoted yourself. You did all of this and that the other. Seriously. So the thing is, I want you to understand as women, you are single until you are married. Somebody asked me today, so you really teach that to your daughters? Yes, I teach that to my daughters. I teach my daughters, if a man wants you, he going to show you it's real. And how do he show, it, show you it's real? He going to make you his wife. And up until that day happened, you a free can, you, you a free agent. You move how you move. Yeah, because what I believe is you make a motherfucker shit or get up off the pot. See, one thing about me, I, I can good time with you. I can I can date you. I can do all of that. But what I know in my mind is I'm still a free agent until you make me your wife. Now, am I pressuring you to make me your wife? No, I'm not pressuring you. Because if you make me your wife, it's because you want to make me your wife. But just understand, up until that happens, anybody else out there can make me their wife. And I ain't going to stop them. Because obviously they want to do some shit that you don't want to do. If more women conducted themselves like that, then you would basically 
put men in a position to choose. Because if you out here and you moving how you moving in this dating market and you doing what you doing, then guess what? It's foul game for me too. But y'all put yourselves in these committed relationships and y'all always silent about y'all getting cheated on. And the reason that it's happening is because, hold on. Oh yeah, this is my baby texting me that she was holding bunnies and was in the back of something. But I'll get back with her in a second. Um, but I just think that if y'all would conduct yourselves in a certain type of way, and it ain't about you proving that you wife material and proving it. Y'all do all this fucking proving and proving and proving and they still don't put no fucking ring on your hand at all. All they do is waste your fucking time. That's all they do. I'm, I'm out here and I see what goes on. They don't do nothing but waste your time. I'm liable to be out of a marriage, in a relationship, in a whole other marriage and you still waiting. You still trying to figure it out. But a lot of times, you know, y'all shun people who are poly, but we are the most open, honest people that you could ever meet. Meaning that, and I ain't talking about no bootleg shit because bootleg poly is that manipulation and lying and she ain't got to know and they said that she know how I move, but I, yeah, we ain't got to really, no, 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 no. Ain't he going straight up kitchen table? Kitchen table is me, you and her, we sit down and we going to give each other our expectations. That's straight up kitchen table. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I ain't talking about no backdoing and manipulating and all that. No, 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 no. You and her are going to both know exactly what's going on. So, kudos to the lady who made the video. Ma'am, I completely understand what you're saying, that everybody is eligible, an uh, uh, eligible candidate. In other words, if a man puts himself in the dating market, he got to know that he's in a relationship. Because it ain't for the people that's in the dating market to know or care if he's in a relationship. Because he put himself in the pool with us. So if he got out here in this pool with us, then obviously he ain't know that you and him had all this going on the way y'all had it going on. And if he out here in this pool, then he's eligible. And as long as he's not married, he's eligible. You know, a lot of y'all want people to, to honor relationships and put uh, all of this stock in the relationships and don't nobody honor relationships. They only, only thing that matters is marriage. That's the only thing that matters, okay? All right, so I have not been doing story time because my page is flagged again. I got 18 more days and then it comes open again. So ladies, bear with me. It's in my group. Um, hopefully y'all are following on YouTube and you'll be able to get this message on YouTube. So I'm gonna give you a little, 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 cause see, I can't give it to y'all raw on here on YouTube because I wanna get paid for this video. Um, but I was able to experience the Wartenberg wheel aka the passion wheel so i know i told y'all that i ordered one for myself for personal use it was beautiful it is beautiful but daddy actually used it on me and i thoroughly enjoyed it. so i'm gonna give you a quick little rundown um he has a big huge bed so he laid me out like in the shape of a t to where my head was literally at the foot of the board and my arms were out like this my feet were to the headboard and he basically took this wheel and traced it. Uh, oh, I had the uh, bone gag in my mouth too. Can't leave that out. And when you're wearing the gags, what I notice is you will uh, salivate a lot. So it's going to be messy, uh, slobbering, spit. You know, you just kind of lay in there and it's just kind of running out. I know, but it's all a part of it. Um, so it makes it hard for you to swallow. Um... So I had the gag in my mouth and of course he got the wheel. But what I noticed with the wheel is the parts of my body that's not really used to being touched were the most intense parts. For example, the back of my arm, like we don't really get all up under the back of our arm and get touched back there like talking about it. So the areas where the wheel touched that normally don't get touched uh, were was where I got the most sensation. On the side of my hand, when he was tracing it up the side of my hand like this, this was extremely intriguing because nobody really touched you on the side of your hand. And when he traced up under my butt cheeks with it, and he went up under the butt cheeks and traced with it, I was like, oh my goodness. But then when he started at the top 
and went down my ass crack with it, I damn near fucking lost it. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing, right? So we do have these on the website and we do have them in the store. And if you decide to get the fetish kit, which is on the website as well, there's one that comes in this kit. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of my people who have been extremely patient with me with getting these wild gummies. They are in stock, finally. So, let me just say this because I know a lot of y'all are not business owners and y'all don't really know how stuff go. But sometimes, we'll have stuff on our website, we'll have certain things going on because it's a product that we know that we can get all the time. So our customers are, are ordering and ordering it, we running sales and we doing all of this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, the warehouse tells us that they, in my situation, the warehouse moved. They, they got a bigger location. So we had to, we had to go through the move with them. They had to get set up and then they were able to ship again. Or sometimes you experience situations to where is the website will say they have a certain amount in stock, but then when it comes time for them to ship the order, they really don't, they really can't beat the demand. And then them as the warehouse is waiting on a manufacturer to send them over more inventory. So I know a lot of people don't know, and I know y'all don't care, but sometimes that does happen, and what happens is the little man like myself, we get impacted by it, but all orders have been shipped. Do you hear me? I was so happy to be able to get all of them orders out, but we do have inventory in the store. We do have um, a black bull honey in stock here at the store, that's a newer one up until the manufacturers get more of the royal honey. But the black bull honey, from what they're telling me, is just as good. I done had my people who do my sampling to come in and get theirs, to be able to sample it for free from me. And then they come back, they go they go get the honey from me, they go fuck, and then they come back and report to me and let me know how the honey worked, what they thought about it. So all of them then got the black bull and they gonna let me know between now and this weekend how they liked it. And for the most most part, most times they, they normally like the stuff that I give them. Um, but yes, ladies, you are single up until you are married. A lot of y'all put a lot of, y'all put a lot of time and stock into these long-term relationships that go nowhere. And you're wanting people to honor it as if it is a marriage when it's not. Now, let me say this too, because you have some situations like myself, I tell people all the time, like, especially in this day and time, like, you know, I don't ever have to get married again. And that's just how I feel about it. Um, I don't. However, that means that up until it happens, I'm still single, right? But when I enter into a, a relationship or a dating situation, I don't enter into it saying I'm dating with a purpose and I need to be married within a year or two if we date. No, I don't look at it like that because one, I'm piling, you piling. And if, you know, I choose to meet somebody else and I like them and you may not see me as a wife and they see me as a wife, then that's your bag. That's your bag. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. You know, I'm not answering anything with the intention of saying, oh, yes. You, you got to date me with a purpose and I got to be married by such and such time. But understand, as long as people are single, they are eligible candidates to be married or eligible candidates to deal with other people. That's how it works. So I just think a lot of times we put too much stock into things unless we decided that we're going to do some type of unconventional union to where we don't need a state marriage. We don't need a state marriage, but we have made a commitment to one another that we're going to honor. Then at that point, we decide how we want to maneuver now that we are not single people because we've made a certain kind of commitment to one another. We just decided not to do a state marriage or a covenant marriage through the church. I, I, I recognize those too. But the thing is, even with that, the person that's doing it, they got to recognize it too. Like everybody got to recognize the, the people in a relationship got to recognize it. One person can't recognize something, the other person not, and then you want the world to respect it. It don't work like that. Um, okay, so let me catch y'all up. Um, this weekend was so busy. I'm trying to think because I had so much going on. Um, masquerade ball. Awesome time. When I say a good time, good time. Be our socialites. Y'all put an awesome event together. Um, over 
2,500 people in one building, not one incident. So when I, I'm always acknowledge like y'all put an awesome event together, I'm still trying to get my voice back because I was at the stage screaming for Juvie. Like I had a great time. Mm, Sunday, me and Doc Phoenix went to New Orleans and we went um, to Katie's. I love oysters. We went to Katie's and ate and then we went to um, a burlesque show. And um, we basically were able to celebrate a uh, cinnamon vixen. She and um, John got married, uh, and they had their wedding reception as the burlesque for show. So it was a burlesque show wedding reception. Co completely cool concept. I love the concept. We had a great time there. That was Sunday. Then Monday we turned around and went back to New Orleans. Dr. Phoenix and I. And we went to the Privé pool. Um, it's a clothing optional pool. Uh, we are part of a book club and it's a book club for people that are, I don't wanna say necessarily in our industry, but the books are all centered around sex, meaning uh, like kink and just uh, anything, it's, it's basically pertaining to our industry, books like that. Uh, it's not like romantic novels or anything like that. It's normally, something pertaining to sex for, so that we can learn. Um, and we get together and we discuss the book, but we have the option to wear clothes or not. Um, so this is my first time going to the book club. Chantel has been several times. And she basically was like, well, you know, when I get there, I'm comfortable. I normally, you know, get completely nude. She was like, but you know, you can feel it out or whatever. So I was like, well, let me put my swimsuit on and I'm gonna see when I get there how I feel about it. But, oh, y'all, guess what? My swimsuit, size medium. Thank you, Emerson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Mr. Givens, too. Thank you, too, because you also told me don't order no large or extra large to get the medium. So, I got the medium. Um, I could fit the medium swimsuit. Yes, indeed. I I know it tripped my head out. Um, but, got, the, got there, had the swimsuit on, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. My first non-sexual nude event Let's do it, Sharonda. So, uh, this was my first non-sexual nude event. And it was very freeing and very liberating. And I was completely comfortable. Like, there was never a point in time where I felt nervous or I felt like someone would body shame me or that I felt like I was too old to be out of my clothes. or I didn't feel like none of that. And the thing was... The group was like people from the early 20s all the way up to a couple that came that were in their late, well, I'm going to say mid to late 60s that were there. So you had a very diverse age group of people and we was all that naked. Some people was in a hot tub, some people was in a pool, some people was around a fire pit, but we were all naked discussing the book and nobody even paid attention to each other's nakedness like we could care less. But it was an awesome experience. Um, and I also had a meeting with uh, Doc Phoenix on yesterday evening. We met for dinner and we discussed some upcoming things that she's going to be planning. So what I'm telling you all to submit your applications and get vetted is because this spring we got like a lot of stuff that we got planned for our community of people here in Baton Rouge. And the thing is, the community is not limited to lifestyle um, it's not limited to kink. It's not limited to queer. It's literally a gumbo of all different types of people. The only thing is you just have to be open-minded. Open-minded and understand that you can't yuck somebody else's yum. So if you're interested in it, make sure you reach out to Doc Phoenix and you get... I tag her in so much stuff on my page, so she should not be hard to find. Uh, especially on my Instagram. Um, but get with her. Get your application put in, get vetted. And just because you submit an application and get vetted, that does not mean that you're guaranteed to actually become a part of the community. All I do is, I have a large platform and my platform consists of people looking for certain things, right? So a lot of times people feel like, well, if anybody knows, Sharonda knows who's doing what, who's doing what, you know, who's who in the industry, right? All I'm doing is funneling people over, right? She is the, the, the professional. She is going to interview you. She's going to vet you. She's going to look at your application. And she decides 
you know, if you would be a good fit for the community, because at the end of the day, it's a network. And we want to know who are the people that's, that's amongst us, right? So you want to be as truthful as possible when you are submitting your application and stuff like that. You want to be very truthful. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for me. Like I said, we have the WAP in stock. I'm here working. Come and see me today. Um, story time will resume once I get my Facebook back. Um, and I'll be able to go into a lot more detail because I know y'all missed my daddy Dom stories. And it was so funny because I was kind of laid up on him the other day. And he was saying, well, what's going on with story time? And I was like, my page block. Like, I don't do it on YouTube. I don't do it like on my Instagram. This is specifically for my 10,000 ladies that's on my Facebook group. So when I do story time, that is exclusive content just for them. Because, baby, let me tell you something. When I get through with story times, y'all bitches be wanting to hunch. Baby, y'all be trying to wake me up, roll them over, get on top of it, take advantage of it. Baby, y'all be taking it from the men. Yes, by the time I get through that story time, bitch, you be wet. You, you be trying to find you some bad. But I literally give you some vivid details. Like, I give you vivid, vivid, vivid details. I can't wait till I give y'all the story time about this recent uh, incident, how I felt like I was about to pass out and I needed some milk. I had somebody that actually send me a message that was like, you know, they feel drained or whatever. If you have multiple orgasms, squirting or whatever, and you just really feel fatigued, drink you a glass of milk. It's going to shake you back instantly. That's the only thing that I have found that will work, that will literally shake me back instantly, is milk. Because other than that, sometimes I'm so fatigued after doing all of this squirting like that to the point where it feel like I'm just, I'm about to pass out. Like, it feel like I can't, I ain't, I ain't got no more left in me. So, yes. Um, but I think that's going to wrap it up. Y'all, y'all been enjoying this journey with me? I, y'all, I'm trying to just get my voice back. But every time my voice come back, I'm getting invited to something else. Like, the Entrepreneur's Brunch is this Sunday at Ball and Rue. And I've been invited um, at, to be a guest. Um, and they want to acknowledge my business at the brunch. So it's like every time I get to a place and then we got the party Saturday, Creed come out Friday. If you need some vibrator pants with the remote control and you're going to see Creed, come see me because Creed come out Friday. Um, yeah, so Creed come out Friday, the play party Saturday. The brunch is Saturday and my baby, Marielle, y'all know her in the adult industry, Charlotte Drops the Cheeks. Um, and that's like a retired name, but I'm just trying to get you to know who I'm talking about because she's not dancing anymore. She's doing comedy now and she's going to actually be on the lineup this weekend with Amina. And Amina is a really great comedian. So I'm going to go and support her in that. So my weekend is like literally pretty full. Like once I get off today and get the, like my weekend is, is, is a, I got a party Friday night to host. Like, I got to get my voice back. I got to shake my voice back. But message up today. You are single until you are married. It ain't no fucking in between. Not unless y'all done came up with some type of non-conventional um, type marriage or a, a non-state marriage. But other than that, you single. Just like when you file your taxes, you put single head of household. You don't put that we go together real bad. Nobody cares about that, okay? All right. Yeah.